welcome back to the channel and a little how to feed your birds on the glove what a simple thing it's like saying how to use telemetry but both of those things there's ways to do it so this is how to feed your falcon hawk eagle on the glove and this is how to hold the food and i reckon i could be wrong most of you watching this think what on earth dave talking about i don't hold my food like that and it looks a bit awkward to do this is how to feed your bird on the glove. This is traditionally how birds were fed on the glove. And yet we all hold the food in a completely different way. And there's a reason for that. And I think the reason is in Philip Glazier's wonderful book, How to Do Falconry, that's not what it's called, Falconry and Hawking, but it's the best sort of written, hold on, hold on. How to Falconry book, he holds his food the wrong way generations of us read that book it taught us falconry and we taught ourselves falconry from that book and then when we shown anyone else how to do falconry okay hold on hold on hold on when we shown anyone else we shown them the same way parrot fashion the internet came along and then we showed everyone else parrot fashion how to feed the birds we're going to show you why i know i'll pop your hood on hold on you're not flying today I'm gonna show you why this way is far, far better for you, your sanity, the hawk and its condition. So typically with an imprint, you really, really notice the benefits more than any other bird. It works, it's, it's the best way to feed your bird for any bird. But let's have a look at this guy. So a typical imprint, and a, certainly a young imprint, he's not anymore, but a young imprint is really possessive over its food. It's driven and it thinks you're equal to it. It thinks you're another sibling or its parent and it's gonna try and mantle and get that food unless you've done a really special job of raising that imprint. So let's just have a look at feeding this bird on the glove. So I'm just gonna give him some food. We're just gonna, he's not flying today. We're just gonna turn this. Day. So have a look how this bird is mantling. He's got his tail out. I'm gonna annoy him more but there's nothing he can do to destroy that tail because feeding like this means he has to stand properly on the glove and he has to lean down to get that food. His tail is over the back of the glove. Doesn't matter how he mantles, how he presses his tail, he can't get the food unless he stands perfectly. So we're gonna be a bit mean. Do you wanna just try and, can you get a bit off him or not, Emily? And put it in the, the rubbish way to feed your birds on the glove. Mm. Let's see, let's just see. So straight away, he always, he almost doing it, he's turning, he wants to turn around and an imprint will turn its back on you if it can. And the worry, and here we are, perfect example, you're gonna destroy that bird's train. And if he was a really manic, underweight imprint or a bit too sharp and keen, he would be pressing that tail down onto the back of the glove, mantling the food, turning his back to you to shield the food from you. And that lovely tail, uh, certainly on an accipiter, is gonna be destroyed. Luckily, that plumado has got tails like Harris's hawks. Quick way to destroy your bird's feathers and create an incredibly bad feeding habit. A bird that turns its back and tries to take the food away. But if we swap back, I don't know, poor, poor bird and poor Emily. If we swap back to the correct way to feed your bird on the glove, a little bit of fair out. Obviously, you guys aren't gonna do this. Let's see what he does. So he's going to be locked on, he's going to be gripping up on that glove. He's, uh, he's going to relax his grip. <laughs> got too much there, hasn't he? Yeah. Uh, so it's slipped out there, that's just because we're messing around. But even, the, even that, you can see he's had to turn around, even with a, this messy carry-on that's just happened because he's got too much of the food, because I've sort of made Emily mess him around and, and fanny about there with the glove and the food. Even that, you can see his tail's straight away over the back of the glove. And when you f fuss about with an imprint's food, you can see what happens. It gets even more irate, it gets more in, more mantly. And certainly for a bit too much shows, but look at that, even there. Now, if he gets that free, you'll see what he's gonna do. And this is exactly what happens when you're feeding the bird incorrectly. It can do pretty much that anyway. It's so simple to feed the birds properly on the glove. We'll have a look at another aplomado and we'll watch it all again with a different bird. So before we feed Maya on the fist, why don't we just take advantage and see how she's got on in the last few days, getting up to speed and getting fitter now she's back up in the air. It's gotta be nice for next week. Keep it nice till then. So she's gonna go and see 
the falcons fly at cow marsh the falconry fair easter weekend may is going to be Maya and Emily is going to be putting on their debut performance so Emily's got another week to get this bird show ready Emily's never done a show before so go and give us some support whatever happens over at the Falconry Fair at Kelmarsh Easter weekend the rest of you once you finish there come and see us here at Holdenby House Icarus Falconry for a fantastic day out with all the family really from little kids to your great great grandparents <laughs> less blustery although it's been really windy all day a bit less blustery than it than it has been for some reason the wind has actually stopped so she does so once she gets really fit some really high little barrel roll sort of dropping vertical stoops it's not got the strength and the fitness yet but she's certainly showing some of what she does just in a less flat out exciting kind of way Was interesting especially a falcon that's unfit seeing them build their fitness and then really really come on song and you th you think they're kind of unfit and then a couple of weeks in we're back to being living missiles again so let's go and see we're going to watch a feed up we'll see the pickup and we'll see how emily holds the food again now this bird's actually parrot reared fully parrot reared if you watched before but it's got imprint behavior and that, that's my fault not emily's fault that's all for the Aplomado video coming soon, as I keep saying. <laughs> it is, don't worry. But again, there's the pickup. It's not difficult to hold the food like that. It's just awkward if you've been feeding your bird a different way. Like anything you do without thinking, muscle memory, when you try and change that, it's like starting again. But of course, the key thing is, you'll be able to do it both ways, because you'll never forget the way you've been doing it for a long time and holding the food. I'll show you a bit more in a second, but the bird, even with that horrible imprinty behavior, it cannot damage its feathers. It cannot turn its back on you. It cannot drag the food away. It has to exhibit good manners when you feed a bird like this. So instead of saying, oh, I've always done it like this. I've always done it my way. I don't need to change. The most lovely thing about falconry is that endless learning. Don't be afraid to change and try something new. This way will feel awkward to start with, but completely proper once you've got a hang of it. Here comes the wind again. We'll feed her up. I'll talk to you some more out of the wind. So I'll use a day old chick because it is the staple for many people's feeding and just so it's easier for those people to kind of see what we're talking about. So this is how most of you guys hold the food. You're holding it like this and you're calling the bird back like this and then it doesn't matter how you hold a bet in the bird's going to come and land on and just eat in one go but when you're feeding on the fist and that's what this is about this is how most people have been taught to hold the food because i think it, i think this came out because it's like that's how, if i gave you some a stick to hold that's how you hold it but no thought to how the bird feeds on the fist so that's your standard way let's swap around and this is the new and improved original way you're holding it like this the bird is eating from the top there and it has to stand on the glove in the perfect way to eat that food and you can just with your right hand bring that food up through the glove as the bird eats it down and it can't get any more you can just push that food up or let the bird gently pot it up it feels so alien if you've been holding the food the other way once you master this just take it to like anything i could keep saying it's going to take a bit of muscle memory once you master this way of holding the food you can hold a whole rabbit leg like this if you want to and feed an eagle half a quail it's weird when you first try it and you'll think mm, honestly this is the way falconry birds should be fed on the glove we're just so used to all of us having learned to hold them like that. So if you hold it like that, and I'm saying you're doing it the wrong way, don't panic. Don't start writing into points of view. Hold it how you like. There's two different real, two different real ways, isn't there? There's that way and the other way. But believe you me, if you actually 
take your I know best, I've been doing it for 50 years hat off and you just try something new. Try it and try it and try it until you've got used to it. Your birds will feed better on the glove, especially if you're someone that likes flying imprints and you didn't know this way of holding the food existed. It's a much better way. It just is. Whether you try it, whether you want to stay with what you do, it's a much better way. Um, and, it, it's, and it's just as easy and as comfortable as holding the food the other way once you get used to it. So this isn't me being snotty. I'm showing you the right way to do something and the better way to do something. And obviously you can either try that if you're a newbie and you're not starting out in full career yet, this is the way to do it, just do it. If it feels a bit awkward because you hold it the other way, just, just have a go, persevere and you will enjoy feeding your birds much more. And certainly if you've got a mal imprint, a poor imprint, or just a parrot reared bird that's got poor manners on the glove, it will be transformed instantly once you get the hang of holding the food the correct way. So a little how-to video, a little helpful video. As always guys, thanks for watching. Really appreciate you tuning into the channel, um, whichever of the genres you like, but I guess you're here for the falconry for this episode. And do me a huge favor if you can, just click on subscribe. This is I'm, stuff, there's stuff we'd all argue about and disagree with, but I'm trying to put out there helpful information for people young and old, new to the sport or been doing it a long time, just little things that if I learn something new that's better, I'll pass it on to you. I love trying new things. So if you can subscribe, just subscribe. It, it costs you nothing to subscribe, but it just makes YouTube push the channel a little bit more when, when people like, comment or subscribe. That's just how the algorithms on YouTube work. If, if you subscribe, it'll start showing other falconers that watch other falconry stuff, the channel and so on. So I really appreciate you being here. Um, the channel's, you know, it's just gone over a little bit over a year now and it's great to see it growing and it's great to see the comments and the feedback and the, and the growing subscription. So thanks very much, you guys. And I'll see you in the next one.